Let's turn rubble from a love to light Keep warm in the storm Breathe awake a little fire only Is this lighting good? No, it's horrible. Let's not lie. The sun's not even out. The sun's not even out. Let's put on some lipstick. So it is starting to get dark earlier, which makes me really sad. But I am getting impressed with my ability to get dressed and ready for the day in the dark. I did shower and like curl my hair a little bit last night and I slept on it, didn't have time to fix it today. So this is what we're working with. Good morning and welcome back to my channel. It is currently 7.57 a.m. So I have just a few minutes here to start this vlog with you guys before the kids come. And when the bell rings, we have to go open the door and let them inside. So once that bell does ring, I will have to catch you later. First day waking up to 52 degree Fahrenheit weather. It was cold, but it's Thursday. So Thursday is more of my planning day. I teach less in the morning and afternoon. So I thought today would be a good day to vlog. This day already started a little bit differently. Normally I get to school about 10 minutes earlier and I sit in my car and sip this coffee and listen to a podcast or the radio just to start off the day, you know, a little bit calmer. You could probably hear in my voice that it is definitely early, but the bell is going to ring in just a minute. So I'm gonna head over and let the children into school. I will catch you after seventh and eighth grade band. We're gonna play some Star Wars and listen to our Christmas concert music. It really isn't so bad. You guys can see some stools in my background, but I mean, there's no paper on the floor. We set the expectation that what they bring into the classroom, they respectfully carry out. Their instruments are neatly placed. There are carts outside my door, so they're not in the way, you know, going through the hallways and other parts of the building, and they just did a good job. Oh, what is on my schedule today? Casting the fourth grade musical. I'm gonna cast the fourth grade musical this week, which, going to be fun. It's the fourth graders first time ever doing a musical and their entire class participates and from what I'm told it's just a really good time. So that's exciting. I cannot believe that we are in week five. About to start week six in like three days. You teachers were not kidding. You really do hit the ground running and it's that time of the year where there's no like major holiday coming up or a day off or a, a national holiday or something. So it's like the long trek between you know what is it Labor Day and Thanksgiving break, that long trek or stretch of days without any holidays. Still taking it one day at a time. Um, I read all your guys' comments. They are so, so sweet. Thank you to those who sent me social media influencers and YouTubers, Instagrammers, anybody who gives good teaching advice. I do still have great mentors here at the school, but it is nice to get like an outside teacher's perspective on classroom management and organization. Something I did get from an influencer you guys recommended is these little popsicles. If you normally have one class, you can just write their individual names on here, but because I teach nine grades. Nine. Grades. I'm going to put numbers on these so it can match my roster. So I can have, you know, numbers one to 30 written on a popsicle stick in a cup. So when I ask questions in general music or I need a partner or a volunteer for something or voluntold for something, I can just pull from the popsicle sticks. And the kids seem to like it so far just because they know there's a chance they could get called. It's not like me picking somebody randomly in the group or, you know, a fourth grader picking his or her best friend. That is something I learned from you guys this week. So thank you very much. Something else I got from you guys was a poll last week where I asked you what you wanted to see in this week's vlog. And I think seeing a first year teacher's budget like won by a landslide. So that is what I'm excited to share with you guys today. Asking for this video actually made me sit down and say, okay, what are we working with now? I feel like I've had three major budget shifts this year from you know living on severance unemployment to that six months again that I did live out of cash envelopes to side hustling. Um, I think I did that for three months straight where I just side hustled full time. And it was a lot, but it was kind of cool to say, hey, you know, I can pay all my bills, you know, just through side hustling and making a name for myself as a business. And now it is a brick and mortar, you know, full time teacher. So I guess four, major budget shifts this year. Anyway, as this is my planning period, I am going to share it with you. I am quickly gonna head over there and set up things for my afternoon classes. I have kindergarten, first and second grade in the afternoon, which gives me a little time to shift from having just taught, you know, my seventh and eighth graders. And I'm just gonna set that up and then I will sit down with you and we will share my first year teacher salary budget. The page, watch it fade up in smoke, hope rise through the rain, higher than we 
it ever go blown away It's gone cold, you say It's someone else's spark It's someone else's heart It's someone one amazing resource I did know about before teaching was that website called Teachers Pay Teachers. And one of the people on there was nice enough to let me have these little printables. Well, not just me. Anyone could have these. But when you have to lesson plan in kindergarten through eighth grade, so nine grades, having a lesson plan binder is literally everything, not just figuratively. It is everything. But we are set up and we will just wait for them to come later this afternoon. Spoiler alert, in a future vlog, I will share with you guys what my lesson planning looks like. I have it all down into one packet that I fill out for each and every entire week that has what we did last week, what we're doing current week, what worked, what didn't, and what to try to do next week. Like I said before, we're all set up and ready, but uh, there's a little bit of time before my planning period is over and I have to go and do lunch duty, so let's go over and talk about money. Welcome to another corner of my big classroom. I feel like you guys never know where I am in this room. Is she here or is she here? I am just making some space here by the window. I'm moving all of my band music out of the way so that I can, you know, have a little bit of space. I am really excited that my 7th and 8th grade band loved their Christmas concert music so much. I do feel weird giving it to them at the end of September, but like I mentioned before in previous videos, with our school schedule, I only see each band, choir, and class one day a week. So to prepare a concert, I only see a band four times a month. So even with Christmas being 10 weeks away, that is 10 rehearsals. 10. All right, I'm just gonna come out and say this. Teachers have always had the stereotype of being overworked and underpaid. And something that I have noticed in the past four to six weeks since starting this career endeavor, people will have their opinions on this, whether or not they have ever spent a day in the classroom. And I do mean big opinions. You're a teacher? Why? They could not pay me enough to do that. You're gonna get sick. So those are just some of the very strong opinions that I got. And yes, I know everyone has an opinion on this. And yes, I know every district is different. So this is not me saying I have it bad or I have it good. I'm just telling you as it is from my experience. But it is also 2018, which I am titling the year of the side hustler. So in the event a teacher or someone in the education profession wants to make more money, there are a plethora of ways that they can do so. Not to mention you could save a lot of money just by having a budget. All right, here is my 2018 first year teacher's budget. I think we're ready. All right, now that we've got this counter cleaned off, let's talk a little bit of money. I'm going to use this kind of notebook, but any kind of notebook paper or even like a Word document or a Google Drive document works just fine. The first thing I like to look at in a budget is the income, of course. Now my handwriting is gonna look really good because I'm like writing to the sides. Now, because of teacher contract agreements, I cannot publicly share my salary pre or post tax. So the school income you see here will be an estimate. It is not an exact dollar amount. I repeat for contract purposes, it is not an exact dollar amount. But let's do it. We get paid every two weeks. So we have one, just school. We'll put this down as 1250 and we get another one of those. This estimate for this purpose is considered to be post-tax. This is what comes into the checking account. These are both school. Now is when the fun stuff comes in, the side hustle, like I've mentioned before in so many videos. I still do a little bit of VIP kid, not nearly as much, not bringing in the big, big paychecks, mainly so I can sleep, but pretty consistently it is at least $500 a month. VIP kid. If you don't know what that is, I essentially teach English online from the comfort of my home. Um, I'm not going to do any big videos on this just because I promised I wouldn't back in the day. Back in the day meaning four weeks ago. But I do essentially teach English as a second language 
online and right now I mainly use VIP Kid to keep me on a good morning schedule on the weekend. So I'll mainly just do this, you know, honestly I only teach about five hours a week, maybe, maybe an hour a day tops. And then still doing a little bit of YouTube and voice lessons. Again, not nearly as much as before, but it does bring in a solid 850 to 1000. But for this, we'll say 850 for YouTube and voice and piano lessons. Let's put an L for lessons. So these are my four current income streams. I did have a video, put up above in the cards, about how I did make six grand in a month doing side hustles. But now that I've incorporated a full-time teaching job, I need to back off the side hustles if I'm going to survive. Total income for the month, 38.50. But you have to remember that uh, VIP and YouTube are pre-taxed. So that's always fun. But for these purposes, we'll go with 38.50 right now. And then, on the other side of this line, I like to put expenditures or the budget, where it's going. Where is this money going? Expenses. I also put these in steps. So step one, I put that tax money away. And for that stuff, it's about 20%. So for a VIP kid, it would be about $100 and here it would be just about $170. And I would put that money away in a separate account that I have, it is labeled taxes. I think it's actually called side hustle taxes, but putting this away early makes it so that when tax season comes, there's no surprises. That money is already sitting in a bank account. No surprises, it's there, we're ready to part with it. Step two, I take money towards my fixed expenses. For those that don't know what fixed expenses are, I do have a video, I'll link it down below, called Budgeting for Beginners. But a fixed expense is an expense that stays the same month after month. This is typically your rent or your mortgage, your insurances, your various bills that come every single month. So money towards fixed expenses. Now my fixed expenses haven't changed too much. I will put a video up in the cards of my summer budget because the expenses on them are pretty identical. What makes my fixed expenses a little bit different is I count grocery store trips and gas into fixed expenses solely because I set aside a specific amount of money and it never changes unless I'm going on a trip, which is a whole other budgeting tab. So you will not see another expense on this side that has to do with grocery runs or gas. Restaurant is different, but grocery store and gas will go into my fixed expense. So I know what money is going towards this. I think I started putting my groceries and gas into my fixed expenses when I was doing the cash envelope system. Um, once again, if you haven't been around here for a while, there was a six month period where I lived out of cash envelopes every single week. So I think I've ingrained it in my head that this is the money I have to go for groceries. This is the money I have to go towards gas. Step three is pretty new to this and it is putting aside a certain amount of money each month for wedding planning. Oh my gosh, once we hit October of 2018, we are a year away. What is happening in the world? If you're wondering where my ring is, now that I wear a Fitbit, I normally have my engagement ring and my old watch on one corner of my bedroom. Now that I wear a Fitbit 24 seven, there are a lot of days where I forget to even walk to that side of the room to get a watch and my engagement ring. So this is the second day a week I have forgotten to put it on, but don't tell Christopher. But either way, number three is just putting aside a little bit of money each month. It's usually like 10% of anything left over. I will just toss into a wedding planning, you know, account or usually just a separate savings account. So if something comes up or there's an upgrade option for like a honeymoon or a flight or something or a dress alteration or just anything that could come up, I haven't started actual wedding planning yet since my sister did just get married last weekend, but there's no more excuses. It's time to get that started in all the free time that I have. Number four is I verify the money that went into my savings. Any other budgeting video I've ever done talks about how I have a auto draft that moves money from my checking to my savings every single Wednesday. I have done that since May of 2012. So 
even when I was making a lot of money on cruise ships or in corporate America or even on unemployment and severance and side hustling, I never changed this number. Every single Wednesday, money moves over. There is no excuse. It's something so that I know I'm always contributing to my savings account and oh yes, it adds up. I promise you, even if it's just a little bit of money, six years, well, six and a half years now, wow, it adds up. So if you can put even 10 to $15 a week into your savings account on auto draft, that's 40 to $60 into your savings account every month, over $700 a year. Number five, I will place an additional $100 into that account just for emergencies. Just in case something happens, I have a small crack in my windshield, a tire goes out, I need a new car battery. All of those things did happen actually. And then just because I already was there and spending the money, I did get an oil change, a new car battery, an air filter, tire rotation. I basically just got my car prepared for the winter and nothing really you know, upset my savings or my money balance because I have been putting $100 extra into that account for emergencies. Number six, to pay off whatever is on my credit card. Right now, I'll just put pay off CC for a credit card. It's usually between you know $100 to $200. I put my gas and my groceries on there, mainly because I will get chase points that I can also put towards my wedding. And I'm also gonna start looking for airlines for maybe a honeymoon or a trip or something. And chase points can go straight off of the card onto the purchase of those flight tickets. So pay off credit card, usually $100 to $200. And step seven, this is where it gets interesting, is to divide the rest. I've only done this one time, because again, I've only been in school with this type of salary for one month, but I called it my quality of life. And I highly recommend you do this if it's something that can fit into your budget. So for me, quality of life, how am I feeling? What could make me feel better that I could buy with money? legally, thank you. Um, does my back hurt from playing piano or conducting? Would a massage help that out? Is that something I could put into my budget? Yes, no, maybe, we figure that out. Would just a quick manicure and a latte help me out on a Saturday morning after I got maybe and hopefully an extra few hours of sleep? Do I need a haircut? Do I need to pay a little bit of my copay to go see a dentist or a doctor? What do I need to continue my quality of life. I'll just put doctor. Other things that I have considered into my quality of life is good quality skin care. I do sometimes pamper myself and I'll go get a blowout at the blowout bar. Have I not seen Christopher in a while? Would a date night where I don't have to worry about cooking or dishes or groceries or meal prepping, would a date night be something that would be fun? How about a spa day? Right now most of my spa days happen at night on a school night at home, but what a spa day be something good. These are just different things that I say, hey, you now have a little bit of extra income. Yes, we're putting a little bit more in our savings. Yes, we're planning a wedding. But for right now, what can I do that will make my quality of life better? Have I not seen my family or friends? Would just having a little bit of money aside to go out to have lunch or dinner with them and catch up, would that help quality of life? Who knows? There are some days I'll just meet friends after school and we'll go get a quick coffee or a latte or a mocha or something and just catch up for 30 minutes. Those things matter and I promise you they will improve your quality of life. Not a sponsor, but I will definitely make mention. I have used the website Groupon to get a lot of these things at a discounted price. Mainly things like spa treatments, manicures, massages. I have a specific girl, I go to her home for haircuts and I just pay her cash for that. But like skin treatments, date nights for good restaurants, spa treatments, I have really been liking Groupon and again, not a sponsor, just something that I have found really helps me if I'm trying to cut, you know, back on my quality of life budget, but I still want, you know, a good hour massage. And a lot of the massages on Groupon are typically originally marked as 80 and you can get them for like 34 to $39. That's over half off. It is wonderful. Just check it out if it's in your area. Again, not sponsored, no mention of it in the description, no promo codes, just something I thought you guys would like. And the last thing I do, Number eight is I can now donate. And this makes me feel really good inside as a human being. I like knowing that I can give 
money where it's needed. Uh, this past month, I donated to actually a project happening here in my school district. They are trying to expand a building and just improve the quality of those kids' education. So I gave, I gave a hundred dollars this past month, just a one-time donation. It felt nice. It was just something to do. But there you have it. That is income versus expenses. If there ever is a time that I go through this entire list of expenses and still have a little left over, I will actually keep that money in my checking account. In the event that my checking account accrues a little bit more money than I need, I have been known every once in a while to make an extra payment on my mortgage, like just a principal payment. But I'll be very honest, I haven't done that since I started a teacher salary. But there it is. If there's anything you think I missed or something that could be done better, let me know down below in the comments. So that is my current first year teacher's budget. I might do another one of these in the spring and see how you know it could change and alter in the next six to eight months. Some things I might change in the future, the amount of money I put toward my wedding or home renovation or a trip or something, that might change the budget. But for right now, it looks to be pretty solid. I'm gonna try to stick to this. And there are certain things I'm going to omit from my schedule to keep me from spending more than I need to, like trips to Target. If you are also a first year teacher watching this and wondering how on earth you're going to live on a budget, the top things I can recommend in my, you know, five week experience, make your coffee at home. I have only had the coffee I have made from home all week long. And then it makes that Saturday morning, you know, latte at Starbucks or a coffee shop a treat. So make your coffee at home, invest in little bento box lunch, you know, containers so you don't get tempted to buy a school lunch. And then stay away from things like Target, make going out with, you know, the teacher's happy hour a rare occasion. Just see what you can do in your schedule because trust me, you can be busy enough and not spending money. Just avoid the places you know you're gonna spend, clean out your inbox, get rid of all those little sales emails, whatever you can do. And there are a plethora of good videos on YouTube and great channels to follow if you are trying to, you know, get out of debt, plan for something, side hustle, whatever your situation is, there are resources to help you guys. Other things I am currently doing are trying to stay hydrated. You've only seen me drink coffee in this video, but I do have that water bottle that I will be drinking during my lunch duty, because I get to go do lunch and recess duty. You see me wear this, but this little Fitbit is changing my life. I've only had it for a few days. It was an early Christmas gift from Christopher, but what I really like about it is that it tracks my heart rate, and it also tracks my calories, so, I now know how many calories I burn, you know, walking back and forth to the copy machine 70 times, going out to recess and walking my kids around the school. I typically come home with about 1,500 calories burned, and right now I am intermittent fasting, which means I only eat for certain amounts of time during the day, which has really helped me because I don't eat after 7 p.m., so I'm not snacking. I'll do a whole other video on my weight loss, but yes, I am losing weight, finally, finally. And spoiler alert, like I said before, I will do a video next week vlogging another day here at school and I will show you guys how I lesson plan. Nine grades, kindergarten through eighth grade. And my kindergarten through fourth, I have two to three classes. I'll have like kindergarten A, KA, KB, 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, all the way up to fourth grade. Then fifth through eighth grade is either band Choir. So fifth grade band, fifth grade choir, sixth grade band, sixth grade choir. So I made a really nice little system. It's a little three page planning system that gets everything I need on paper. So I know what to pull on my laptop and my PowerPoint presentations. And I know what it needs printed. I know what music I need. It is literally a life saver. It lets me go home after school and on the weekends and not lesson. Also, major shout out to Teachers Pay Teachers. You guys are an unbelievable community and great resource that I never thought would help as much as you guys have. Other than that though, I think that is it. Tomorrow is our first school dress down day, meaning we can wear jean pants. I'm wearing this little jean jacket, but it's mainly just so I can put it over a dress and like look put together. Remember six months ago when I wanted to get rid of this in a minimalist video and every comment said, don't get rid of that jacket, girl. You keep that jacket. And I'm so happy that I listened to you guys. Anyway, first dress down day tomorrow, I'll be wearing a sports, we're cheering on Ohio State at school tomorrow. So I'll be wearing Ohio State attire to school and real nice jeans. I gotta go. 
it's now time for me to go to lunch and recess duty. I will catch you guys next week. Have a great week, you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Let's burn, let's turn rubble from a love to light. Keep warm in the storm. Breathe awake a little fire on. Smoke hope rise through the rain higher than we'd ever go blown.